happy Halloween, everybody. Welcome in. I am so excited. We have a Halloween show for you guys tonight. And uh, I just got in from trick-or-treating with my son. And uh, let me tell you, our neighborhood was popping tonight. There were so many kids out trick-or-treating. It was so lovely. And uh, we had a really good time. I know my son had fun. Yes, I checked the candy. I had to do a poison test of his Reese's Buttercup tonight. Okay. <laughs> I know you you parents can uh, can relate. And uh, yeah, I had chocolate tonight. I don't usually eat candy. And uh, and so I, I am I'm all jacked up now on candy. So this is going to be a fun show. So uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for being here tonight. Uh, I have Nick Valente with me to co-host tonight. So you guys know that Nick is a Fortean researcher, uh, really big into the paranormal. He's actually the region three and region five heads uh head of the dog man uh the north american dog man project and the head of the international dog man project so you guys know we're going to be talking dog man tonight along with a whole lot of other creepy crawly critters out there okay so i'm going to bring up nick valente tonight hey nick hey how you doing happy halloween I am excellent. I am excellent. It has been a it's been a long day, and I'm having a lot of fun though. And uh, and I have been looking forward to this night for a while now. So oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, we have a, a slew of uh, really good guests. Uh, they're going to be telling some spooky stories, and uh, well, I guess we'll be running to like midnight with them, maybe maybe beyond. That's right. Yeah, we um. I, I plan to go until midnight, okay? And I, I don't want to go over midnight because I know uh, my 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 radio station, Space Out Radio, Dave Dave Scott's going to be on at midnight, and I don't want to be overlapping okay. if I can help it with his show. Out okay. of respect for, for Space Out Radio tonight, and I always like to uh, to recognize him. Shout out to Dave Scott. All right. But, yeah, we have, a, we have an amazing lineup, and we might have a surprise guest or two that Ooh. pops in. Yeah. Um, so Nick, let's, let's tell would you like to tell everybody kind of what the gist is tonight, what we're planning on doing? Well, basically we're going to take on a guest and they've got about 25 minutes or, or less if they, you know, if it runs shorter to tell a really scary story about <laughs> either any kind of a cryptid, any cryptid, dog man, Bigfoot, Sasquatch, uh, moth man, frog man, yes. uh, anything like that. And, um, Possibly our last guest, if he does show up, he's got some, you know, really, really, really good stuff to, to tell us about. And if we have like a, a lag in between, either you or I can uh, tell something. I mean, I have something from last October yeah. that was sent to me and it was horrible. It ended really in tragedy. Uh, but uh, we'll leave that just in case, just in case I, I need to tell it. Oh, Nick, we have plenty of stories to tell. I know you and I do. Between oh, yeah. both of us, yeah. Uh, but we we know these guys are not going to not show up. I've talked to every one of them today, and it was so lovely, actually, uh, just asking asking some of the... I mean, these are some heavy hitters, y'all. We got some oh, heavy yeah. hitters here tonight. Oh, yeah. I can't believe the the first guest that you got. I really oh, yeah. it's amazing. I know. Well, as soon as, as soon as he gets here, I'll introduce him. But uh, yeah, I mean, do you want to go on the list or should we just introduce them as they show up? What do you think, Nick? Yeah, let's give them a little uh, preview. Okay. So you guys, tonight, our first guest is going to be Josh Turner of Paranormal Roundtable. All right. And uh, everybody knows Josh Turner. And uh, and he always, he brings the crowd and he's so knowledgeable, so smart, and, uh, and has a lot of experience with the paranormal. So we're going to have Josh Turner on. Uh, and then after that, we have... My new friend, Jeremiah Fountain, former pro MMA fighter, okay, and uh, really big into Sasquatch and dogman research. He actually has a family of Sasquatch that live on his property, y'all, okay, uh, with his family. Uh, I had him on Spaced Out Radio. I've also had Josh on Spaced Out Radio as well. Huh? Um, so we're, we're going to be uh, talking with Jeremiah, and he's also got a show with you, Nick. Yeah, I co-host a show with Jeremiah. He's a real good friend of mine, and I, I love the guy. He is great. Oh, but, yeah. Uh, like you said, he's had some Sasquatch in his area, and uh, they actually messed with him quite a few times, but I'll let him tell that. And He and his wife, years ago, when they were traveling around in the, around the country, I mean, I believe they had uh, a dogman experience or two. But once again, I'll let him tell that because it, it's really, really some scary stuff. 
Yeah. Well, I can't wait to hear about that. Okay. And, and then after Jeremiah comes on, we have uh, Daryl Denton coming on and a lot of people know Daryl. Yeah. Um, He's, he's actually spent a lot of time at the LBL and done a lot of research up in Kentucky and is friends with a lot of those guys up there like Martin and Martin Groves. And, uh, and so he's going to be here to talk about Dogman and Bigfoot and all that. I, Lord knows what we're going to get into with Daryl tonight. So. I'll tell you, Daryl, Daryl should write a book or at least uh, have somebody transcribe a book for him. Because when Daryl tells about his experiences out there with the cryptids, he tells it in detail. It's in wonderful detail and you're drawn right into the story. So this is this is going to be a really great lineup. Oh, yeah. Well, and we're not we're not done yet. We got more. But wait, there's more. <laughs> OK. And then we've got Tex and Jason and Rob. Tex, oh, okay. Jason McLean and Rob from Texas Front Porch and Bigfoot Michigan Rob. Uh, and Serial Papers, y'all. And they're going to be coming in. Those are that's my crew, too. Uh, you know, I do a show with Texas Front Porch on Friday nights. Yep. Um, and so they're they're coming in. And then a surprise guest uh -huh. uh, who's going to come in when his show's done tonight. We've got D.A. Roberts stopping by tonight. Yep. D.A. Roberts, too. the author, yeah. D.A. Roberts. Oh, yeah. And so it's got some stuff to tell that are I mean, I know he writes fiction, but he's got some nonfiction stuff to tell that is scary as hell. I mean, he's he just barely got out of one situation with a friend of his when they were. Uh, exploring an area up there, but I won't spoil it for everybody. It, it was, it was close. It was close and hilarious at the same time. Okay. Well, you, you actually had gone up to the LBL with DA, right? Oh yeah. I've seen some video of you guys in a, in a vehicle together. And, you know, DA had me remote view uh, the Joe Bald recreation area a while mm -hmm. back. And uh, he has a video. <laughs> he didn't realize there was a dog man in the, in the woods behind him that was captured on film. Yeah. And uh, yeah. and well, like I was saying, he's he researches the areas that he writes about. And in this one particular area, he and his friend Steve are in um, something Steve did up there was just, you know, I hate to spoil it. You know, I, I don't want to really spoil it, but Steve really did something. And it, it really took <laughs> I don't want to be gross, but it took a pair to do what Steve did, even though Steve didn't know what he was doing at the time. Oh, man. I, I oh, hope yeah. that one. I want to hear that one. Yeah. Well, we, we're going to hear a lot of interesting stories tonight. And I know Josh is on his way. He said he'll be here in about one minute. Uh, and so we're going to we're going to get into uh, yeah. some of Josh's fun stories. And, you know, I figured Josh, I figured Josh would be busy tonight. So uh, but it never hurts to ask yeah. y'all. No. It never hurts to ask somebody. The worst they can say is what? No. <laughs> That's right. right? I want to yeah. give, a, give a quick shout out to Eddie Rodriguez. Eddie, how are you? What's <laughs> up, Eddie? There. What's up? Oh, okay. Oh, I'm 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 lacking behind, lagging behind on these uh, comments tonight. What's up, Tom? Eddie, you... By the way, this is a oh, meal bar. Nice. Hey, I eaten yet? <laughs> I've been working all day. Hey, Tom. I actually was just watching you and Barton a while ago. That was a great interview. So everybody go go hang, uh, go check out North Carolina Cryptid and Paranormal Research uh, Project on YouTube and go check out him and he and Barton Nunley were just uh, together on that tonight. That was a great show. So uh, everybody, everybody go subscribe. OK. And uh, yeah, and I think we've I think we got Josh backstage. So. Are we ready? Are we ready for the man himself, the man, the myth, the legend? We've got Mr. Josh Turner here with us tonight. Happy Halloween, Josh. Turn it back so I know. Hey. Hey, guys. Hey, Josh. Put these headphones on. I hate these things. <laughs> Happy Halloween, Josh. Hey, how you doing? Welcome. Welcome. We're doing great. How are you tonight? I'm good. How are you doing? What's up, Nick? Hey, Josh. Happy Halloween, dude. Uh, happy Halloween. Yeah, we're good. Uh, we were, I was just telling everybody I'd been out trick or treating tonight with my son. Uh, that was that was fun. Oh yeah. Yeah. What did, do you do? You do any kind of fun festivities on Halloween? Chase crackheads. Oh, crackheads! That's yeah, fun. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> we got like... some. We got some <laughs> properties right now, like a, a couple of them that are a little bit roguish, and some of our sites are kind of in the bad areas. So yeah. I'll be out oh, yeah. doing that tonight, dealing with people who are, we had an attempted murder the night before last, so that was interesting. It was. Uh, oh my god. Yeah. So. 
Let's well, not talk about what I do for a living. It's yeah, gonna a, let's it'll not. Be a buzz, let's, it'll be a buzzkill. Let's just let's talk about the paranormal. Well, well, last night was Devil's Night, so it is a night of destruction. That's when they You're burn right. everything down in Detroit and shoot firemen in the back, isn't it? I guess so. That's horrible. Yeah. It's horrible. Yeah. Well, you know, we just want to talk about some creepy stuff tonight, not not murders and things like that. <laughs> we can help it. Well, sometimes hey, murder becomes uh, becomes paranormal after after that, and there becomes a creep factor afterwards. Oh. It does. It does. Yeah. Well, we were uh, maybe wanting to hear some some creepy stories. Have you got some some kind of Halloween story or something? Uh, one of your one of your scariest stories ever. Yeah. Um, Actually, tomorrow night I'm gonna do my show, so I gotta I, I put together like a, a batch of my scariest stories ever for for the last year or two. I put them together, but uh, I do, I do have one that I can tell you that I was actually planning on doing on my show, but I, I will give this to you. I have a couple, and and it, it depends on the category of what you want because I have a lot of ghost stuff, and Halloween seems kind of ghosty. Yeah. I don't know. Um, I, you know what? We we usually talk dog man and, and stuff like that. Let's talk ghosts tonight. I would yeah, love that. I could definitely yeah. do some ghosts. Um, I'm actually, okay. that's my next project. I have like projects lined up. Um, I made a mistake on my show though, with the, with the dropping all those episodes together because some of them got like a whole bunch of hits and then some of them didn't get hardly any. And that's mm -hmm. not normal for my, uh, when I drop an episode, typically it, 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 it does a certain number of views. And I think that it's just, we drop too many. And so uh, you live and learn. So I'm not going to be doing that again. I'm going to start going back to the once a week and then the, just doing the live stream once a week. But uh, never, never run out of material. Nick, we haven't talked since the freaking conference, man. I think it's been like since late. Well, I talked to you a little bit after that, I guess, but it hasn't been since like yeah. late August or well, early but September. But I gave you a call last week, and uh, I guess you were busy. You didn't answer. Man, I have been so busy. Uh, I haven't. I usually talk to Barton like at least twice a week, and Ken, and I haven't been able to talk to anybody. It's been so hectic, um, you know, with the job and all that. So, I, I can give you one though. About we, we'll start with this one. Uh, this one is comes from the job. How much time do we have? Because I don't want to start going on and then. You know. We got about we got about twenty minutes. Oh, okay. About 20 okay. minutes. So, is that okay? Uh, Somewhere 15 to 20. Yeah. Okay. Let me see what I got here for 15, 20 minutes. <laughs> um, I'll tell you what. Okay. Th this one involved a property that we did. Uh, and this was actually back in the summertime. And I think it was pretty scary. And, and it was a building that had burned and it had gotten burned up. And one of the, we were there for like, I think three days. And a bunch of weird stuff started happening. And I, like I put three or four different guards in there. Now I'd already been through this before, which is why I ended up on the show. Uh, These woods are haunted on the travel channel. And oh, cool. um, hold on one second. Okay. Hey, can y'all answer this? So, um, so I ended up on the show, the travel check is These woods are haunted. And it, and it had, it involved uh, me and a property where I had had several guards who had to uh, leave that property in the middle of the night. So it ended up with us just giving it up. And, and my uh, business partner um, was the last one to go and work it. And of course he ended up like leaving in the middle of the night and chickening out too, after he poo pooed everybody's stories. Um, so we had a property that kind of started out like that. Um, what the problem was with this property was that when, when it burned, um, there were a couple people who got burned too, and they didn't die on the property. They died later in the hospital, but several people were injured, but it wasn't a, um, and I say it was last, I think it was a year before last, actually. Um, it wasn't in anything, but just, a, uh, homeless people basically had broken into a couple of vacant, uh, uh, apartments and they had lit it on fire, um, starting a fire inside, you know? And so really and truly what they should have done was moved everybody out of that building because it was about to be going under renovation. Mm -hmm. And instead of like, you know, moving them in, like staggering them, they should have just had everybody leave because the homeless people just immediately came in to the, to the vacants. And, and so it started a fire and this did not happen to me. None of this happened to me, but it began a kind of a similarity, you know, um, I was seeing like a correlation, you know, um, so the first guard that we had out there, like he's, he's actually deceased now. And unfortunately last year he took his own life, but it was oh, no like, he started having serious nightmares and I don't, 
I'm not going to sit up here and say that this is what contributed to it, but prior to this experience, it seemed like he didn't really have a lot of problems. Um, hmm. But then one day we were up at Top Golf, which was one of my clients up until last year, and uh, he was talking to me about his experience, and he kind of went in depth about it. Um, and so I, I do feel like maybe he was a person who wasn't really uh, predisposed to believing in this stuff. And he did have some emotional issues. And I think maybe being exposed to it may have caused more trauma. But what happened was he was doing his rounds and he saw something moving in the corner of the, of the, one of the apartments. And there were two, th these were two bedroom apartments and he was coming out of one of them. And he thought he heard somebody say a name, um, but it wasn't his name, but he thought he, so, so he thought somebody was talking. So he shined his light. And when he went across for a split second, he thought he saw somebody coming toward him, but it was just a raccoon. So it kind of freaked him out. And then he, then he kind of wrote <laughs> off the whole, okay, somebody talking. I must have imagined that part. And mm -hmm. what I heard was just the raccoon running toward me. Um, so he goes back outside to get in his vehicle. Uh, about two in the morning, I went to go do my guard checks and he told me about what had happened. Well, the place where we were working at, I remember working there years and years ago, like back in the late nineties or something. Um, and it was notorious for gang activity, drugs, all kinds of stuff. And so I'm surprised it's still standing. It still is. Um, but it was in the hood big time. And so there was a lot of issues. Um, and there were people who had been killed there. And while we were working there back in the 90s, there was a guy who was a drug dealer who was really mouthy and did all kinds of whatever. And someone ended up just walking up and shooting him in the face. Um, and then after he, he, he was killed... There were several reports of people claiming to see this guy like they would see him with his face blown off, like literally somebody blew his face off. Oh my. Um, and, yes. and I think it was kind of like they sent a message because the guy prided himself on being like a pretty boy. And that was mm -hmm. his nickname. Like, you know, he called himself Suave, which was like, a, you know, he's handsome, you know. Um, and so I made a joke to, to this uh, guard. Um, and I said, I said, you know, there used to be a guy out here that back in the 90s, he got killed by another gangbanger. And they called him Suave. And his face was, you know, messed up, you know. And so people would see his ghost, whatever. And this guard was like, yeah, whatever. He's no nonsense, whatever. Well, the next day he calls in, which was very unusual for him. If he, you know, when he says he's going to work and he really didn't need the job. It was like he was retired. Um, and he was one of those older guys, kind of like Nick, that, that looks younger than their age and was very handsome, you know. And and didn't, didn't need to work. He right. just wanted to, something to do, right? So he right. called in, and, and I was kind of taken aback by that. And I was like, "Are you you're calling in?" Because he had never done that to me before. He said, "Yeah, I'm not feeling good, whatever." So I sent another guard up there, who was his friend, who actually gave gave that guy the job. Um, it helped me uh, hire him, whatever. And so this guy I'd known for years, and he was not a, a scaredy cat. He was a no nonsense kind of guy. And he calls me up frantically about 1.45 in the morning and says, man, I I'll st stick out the night here, but I'm not going back in that building. I'm not doing any checks in that building, and I'm not going – I'm I'm just not going to do it. And he said, I don't want to talk about it. So when I tried to ask him, he said, I don't want to talk about it. I'll write the report. That's it. So the next day, I called this guy. His name was Mike. And I called him, and I said, Mike, you know, what, what's going on? What happened? He goes, dude – Something tried to grab me when I was coming out of the back, the, the, through the hallway, something, it was dark in the hallway and I felt like something grabbed me and tried to pull me into the, into the apartment, one of the apartments. He goes, when I looked, I could feel like an arm on my hand, on my leg and on my arm. I could feel like something pulling me and it was cold and there was a hissing noise in my ear the whole time. Oh, wow. Yeah. So That's he said that when he turned in, yeah, it was pretty creepy. Yeah. So I, so I asked him, I'll call the other guy. G, I don't want to say his name. I mean, yeah. back children and stuff, and he did take his own life. So, so I, I said, I said, does this? Do you know anything about G? Like what, you know, what happened with him? Like why he? He said, well, you you might want to talk to him. Well, at that time, he was working security at Whole Foods for me, and uh, we we had that contract during the pandemic. So I drove up there that that later that day, and I said, hey man, um, you know, you want to talk to me about what happened? And still at that point, he was not wanting to really talk about it. He goes, nah, man, it was just, it's just not my thing. You know, mm -hmm. I thought I saw something and he kind of left it at that. Well, he went more in depth later on. So I put another guard up there. We'll call him H because he still works for us. But that guard 
left like at midnight and he just said, you know what? I'm not working over here. He goes, I thought that there were two vagrants in one of the, 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 the uh, buildings. So there's like two buildings together. Right. And then mm-hmm. there's just like an archway or whatever. And he said, I went into one of the buildings to see who these people were. They were both wearing black, like they were hooded black figures. But he said it, it was weird. I thought that he was talking about wearing hoodies. He said, no, they were wearing like hoods that like it looked like they were wearing cloaks or something. Wow. And I was like, like, like from what, like a satanic ceremony or what are you talking about? And he says, maybe, I don't know. He said, but when I went in there, I heard them call my name. And so he says, when I look to, into one room, you could see the doors open. He goes, and I look into the other room and I could have swore I saw two people like duck, duck on either side of the door. Uh, one like flushed against the wall and the other one went back into the room. So he yelled out security and he walked toward the, the, the room and he shined the flashlight because there was no electricity. Of course, he doesn't see anything. This is where it really gets weird. The, the windows were all closed up and everything. And then he said, when I, when I shine my light across the window, he said, I see this hooded figure standing on the other side of the window outside. He said, oh. and the window was, was, you could see it was locked so he goes, I, I backed up and I was like, whoa. When he said when he looked at the person's face, part of their face looked like it was gone. And I said, so H, what do you mean oh, gone? Wow. Like, what are you talking about? And he says, well, it looked like somebody had like burned this person. And he's like, I'm assuming because there was a fire, maybe that this person was in the fire because there were some people that were injured. And I said, well, that doesn't make sense because there were two people that died of smoke inhalation and nobody really got burned up. You know, there was mm-hmm. a couple people that were treated for minor burns and they're released. I said the two people on the farthest part of that property, they got, they died of smoke inhalation and then they were you know, pulled out or whatever. Cause typically in a fire, that's how people die. Um, yeah. So I told him that and he says, well, I don't know what this person's deal was, but part of their face was not there. And so I said, okay, and being doing security as long as I have and working in some of these places we've worked at, we have gotten stories of really weird stuff. I mean, like I can tell you, like and the guards see things and hear things all the time, especially when you work in some of the bad areas, really old, old areas, you know, um, where you're working with like new buildings and things like that. It's typically not, you know, but when you're working in these old properties and it's mm-hmm. in the hood, you're going to get some, you know, this is like, you know, tales from the hood, you know, it's like, you're and, and do they, do they work solo? Is it like a one man yeah, team? That, that, that post was a solo post. We have one now that's very similar to it mm-hmm. because it's almost identical. Like it got lit on fire. Um, and, and we have two people, there's two people there. And then we had another mm-hmm. one last year and it was two people, but nothing was going on like this. Um, at least not yet. But anyways, th- this guard tells me this. So he's a third guard, right? So then I, I went up to Top Golf when I had uh, G working up there, and I-, I started talking to him. And I said, "Can you tell me what you saw?" Because now H doesn't want to do it, and so now I got to put K in over there. Um, and he's like, "Okay, well, I'll just say his name, Kenny." He- he- I think okay, cool. Is one of my guards that works for me. And so I told I, I told Kenny, "Do you want to go up there?" He's like, "Not really." Um, not after you hear these weird stories. And one of the patrol guys was a busybody and <laughs> got the story and then went and told Kenny over there where he was at. And he's like, yeah, they're going to have to put you over there, dude, because you know, it's scary. Well, the patrol guy had been working there before for a while. So he had already been seeing things like shadows and stuff like that. So whenever this uh, other guy said he was going to work it, I said, well, let's, let's go to, to Top Golf and talk to G and see what it was that he actually saw. Well, that night he told me, he says, I saw a man whose face looked like it was partway gone. Ooh, same so, story. Wow. Yeah. So whenever he yeah. told me that, I said, okay. I was like, at first you told me, you know, that something had happened. And then Mike tells me that something grabbed him. I said, so what, you know, I said, I'm just trying to piece this together. So I had made up my mind that I was going to work it. And then once Kenny went there and he decided that he, it wasn't his cup of tea. I said, that's it. We're pulling it. So I just told him we're not going to do it. We had enough work already. We didn't need to waste our time dealing with a property that was obviously going to be a problem. And Anthony's actually standing right here. And you remember that incident where we pulled the guards? Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, we ended up just pulling it because we had a meeting and I told him and my partner, I said, this thing is a problem, dude. So he ran his patrol through there. um, And one of the patrol guys about, three or four months later told me that he was walking through the middle of the property. Same thing happened. Only this time he gets like pinned against the wall and he's not like something is holding him there. He can't see anything, 
but it's just like a cold wall, like in front of him. And but he could hear like somebody whispering in his ear, but he couldn't make out what it was. And so he just, you know, after that, he didn't quit. The guy's he's pretty brave, or or he's dumb. I don't know. Either way. But he but <laughs> the guy's still working for <laughs> yeah, he's still working for us. He's my part, my business partner's guard or whatever, but he's a good guy. And he's a retiree too. He doesn't really need to do it, but he just does it because he enjoys it. But he's doing the patrol. And he, he said, I don't get out of my vehicle anymore at that property. And so eventually until it, until they finished working on it, they hired another company that, that subcontracted for us before we gave it to them and they finished it. Now, here's the thing. I did talk to one of the guards that worked for that company because I went by there one night when I was out doing my guard checks. And I said, you know what? I'm, I want to see what, what, you know, cause I'm curious. Yeah, of and course. So, I went over there and there was a guy named Samuel that was working there. And he told me that when he was doing a building sweep on the first night he was there and that the night that, that I met him, it was only his second night ever being there. His first night had been two weeks before. And he had told his boss who I've known for years, he told him that he didn't want to go back there, but they, they said, okay, look, we have nobody. We need you to do it in a pinch. And so he ended up like going back to work there. Well, earlier that night, when I showed up, he was pretty shaken up. And I said, hey, can you tell me what happened? And he says, well, he goes, I really don't want to talk about it until I leave this place, you know, but I'll, I can call you tomorrow and we can discuss it because he's one of those people who's kind of like superstitious. He didn't want to, you know, mm -hmm. I said, okay. So the next day comes and I just said, you know what, I'm going to call this guy and see if anything happens. So when I called him, he told me, he says, dude, I was going through the property and when I got in between the two uh, buildings and I, and I turned left to go into the bottom to do my sweep, he said, I see a guy sitting on the stairs. And this is what he told me. He said the guy was sitting there smoking a cigarette. And he said that the guy had on a starter jacket, not a black cloak or a hood or any of that other stuff. And when he started describing this guy to me, I remember this guy. And I remember him being that guy that used to deal drugs right there at that spot. I remember that building. And I was thinking about it, and I had reached out to a guy who I had worked with years ago, and I and I said, what building was that? Do you remember where that guy was shot? And he says, I'm not real sure. I know it was toward the middle of the property. And he started kind of describing it. We started talking. This guy was a dog handler. And then I put two and two together, and I said, that is where he got shot. That is, that's where wow. it happened. And oh so gosh. ended up, he goes, the guy looks up at him, and when he did, he said, this whole side of his face was gone. And then the guy told him in Spanish, these guys, they're both fluent in Spanish. And he said, estoy muerto, basically, which I've heard before, which on another story that I'm going to talk about tomorrow night on my show is very similar. And he says, which means I am death or I am dead. Wow. And so then he backed up because he was so shocked looking at this guy's face. And he goes, I kind of looked down and looked, like, looked up again and the guy was gone. But he saw the yeah. cigarette laying there and he could smell the smoke. Wow. So, it's the, the dimensions kind of overlapped at that moment, you know? Yeah. Interesting. And, and, and interesting for that, that, that it was actually in October when that happened. So oh, yeah? that was two Octobers ago. Yeah. And so I thought the, that was, the veil is thinner in October mm -hmm. tonight. The veil is thinnest. You mean to tell you Anthony wouldn't work that for you? <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, he, back when the, that church of the forgotten situation took place, he was one of the unwilling people. He was like, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to go out there. Uh, he cited fuel reasons for it, but uh, obviously he was just scared, so I don't blame him. Um, it scared the crap out of me, too, you know. But uh, I didn't work it, and so none of that ever happened to me. But um, I got another really quick one if you got time. Do you have a – Yeah, well, Jeremiah has not popped in yet, so yeah. Jeremiah we, we got Fountain? a couple minutes. Yeah, Jeremiah's coming up next. I like yeah. Jeremiah. He's a good guy. He's a good He's friend awesome. of mine. He's awesome. So he, here's another one. <laughs> and this, this this is funny because, like, it's not funny. It's actually tragic, but it is strange. I was actually reading when I worked this post. It was it was a defunct. We used to have the housing authority, mm -hmm. which is like all of the, the government-funded projects, basically the projects. Mm -hmm. And it was a place called Rio Lotto. Well, it doesn't exist anymore. And then the last, its last incarnation was just to be beat the heck out of by the fire department when they did their training. But we were there to keep homeless people off of the property and keep it from being lit, lit on fire because they love to start fires over there. And then they stay warm. Yeah. Right? <laughs> well, they like to start fires regardless. I mean, right. this was summertime, but I mean, they, anyway, okay. I was working out there and 
I, strange, uh, strangely enough, I had worked it back in the 90s. In the late 90s, I did some security out there. Um, and there was a kid who was slinging crack and another kid shot him. Um, mm -hmm. So I was out there and I was, believe it or not, I was reading Barton Nunley's book in Humanoids. It was the first Love time it. I read his yeah. book. And so I was, this was, you know, 10 years ago, something like that. I don't remember how many years ago it was. Um, but I've talked about this with Barton and I may have told you this, Nick. And, and I was sitting there and I was reading the book. And I remember like when this happened, it was in late summer when this kid, this thing happened, right? It was years ago. And I was sitting there and I just remember hearing like a, a bang. Now get this. It wasn't like a gunshot. It was more like a bang, you know, like something had yeah. slapped something. Like a clap. You know, like clap, yeah. you know. And so I thought, that's weird. So yeah. I heard it again. And then I heard someone like like scream, like a woman or something scream. So I'm sitting there. I'm all alone at this site. It's a pretty big property. So I put the book down and I get out and I got to do my job. And I started walking toward where this uh, loud bang clap noise had happened. And um, it took me right to the exact spot where that incident had happened, where the, the one oh, kid really? had shot the other kid. And uh, yeah. I thought, that is weird. Like, I know exactly where it was at, you know, on that property. It's now been leveled. It's been raised to the ground. There's nothing there. It's just slab. But, um, you know, we had to do it because, you know, we had to keep, keep people from going in and getting hurt because it belonged to the city. And also, we had to uh, keep people from burning it down. So... I just kept thinking, like, this is a pointless assignment, you know, because it's like this, there's just nothing but holes in this building. Well, anyways, what I figured out was it was more than likely the, the fire department had smashed in a bunch of spots, you know, and a piece of wood had fallen and hit another piece of wood. And then it broke like a piece of the there was the glass was already broken, but there was like a piece of glass that had fallen out of it. Um, but what are the odds? You now you're sitting there. And when I talked to one of my guys that I worked with years ago back, you know, I, he, he was there the night when that happened. And I showed up after the fact, like it was like it had just happened. But I walked up on the scene and I was like right there even before the first responders got there because I was at an adjacent property. Uh -huh. And so I remember that that incident very clearly. And so I thought, what are the odds? You know, so I asked this guy, you know, um, that I was friends with for a long time. And I said, Rob, what do you remember about that? And he told me the date. He told me the date. He goes, I remember the date because it caused him a lot of trauma. Like he was like, dude, I was right there when it happened. And then, you know, the kid ended up running inside and taking a shot at him. And, it, and then he, he had like literally gone inside and it became a SWAT team situation. So he remembered it very clearly. And it was that day. Wow! But, like it was, te it was technically, it would have been the, the night of like after midnight. So, but it was that day, it would have been at midnight. It would. And so it was about one eleven when it happened. I heard that, that noise. And so that always gave me the creeps. And it happened while I was reading Barton Unley's book in humanoids. And I told <laughs> Barton, I said, man, after that happened, I got freaked out. And I was just like, I couldn't read that book for a couple of days because of all the weird stuff in there. Yeah. And uh, so I just kind of would sit there and I did, I was so freaked out by that whole incident that I sat there for about two nights and didn't do anything. I didn't uh, listen to the radio. I didn't, <laughs> it didn't do anything. I just, just sat contemplating. There. It's like you're contemplating your reality yeah, now, just, right? Um, <laughs> you know, and I was a young guy when that happened. And when you walk up on a scene and you see something like that, it sticks with you and you're just like, wow, that's pretty messed up. You know, it's pretty, it's a, it's a crazy thing, you know. Yeah. But uh, anyway, that's that's that story. So you know, I don't know. Um, that's awesome. No, that's those are great stories. I mean, it makes you wonder, like, what's going on in that area where all these dimensions are kind of overlapping and showing themselves to the people, to humans. You well, know, those two those two properties are several miles apart. They're not in the same hoods. Um, mm -hmm. th there's like separate hoods. There's like a, a couple places, like there's one called Meadowbrooks. They call it Murder Brooks down in South Austin. And it's like a crip stronghold. And then that one there was Bloods. So, I mean, you had like different, and then you had certain gangs, you know, like there was a, a Latino gang called EGV, another one called Los Hermanos. And so you, you had different properties and you had to know like which gang was like, running drugs or doing whatever they were doing in each one of these properties, because that's who you had to deal with. So what was odd about that, that particular situation was that it was one set of bloods fighting with another. 
Um, oh, which, really? Yeah. So it wasn't Bloods and Crips or anything like that. It was just two. I think it was just two kids beefing over who's going to sell crack in that corner. A little and infighting. One of them decided to do that. But then it turned into. Now, here's here's what's really weird. My nephew and another guard I had named Gabriel, they both worked there at different times. Um, claimed to have seen sh uh, shadows like moving around in that particular area. Um, yeah. There was also like somebody who had died like uh, like in the middle, like in a little park area or whatever. Somebody had died there. And my nephew had claimed to have seen, uh, my nephew Zane said he saw somebody like crawling that he thought was actually a living person crawling on the ground. And when he walked toward it, he, he realized it was just a shadow and when he shined his light on it, it the, the 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 light it was almost like the darkness of it absorbed the light. So I thought that was pretty weird. And then he said that he kind of like weird. backed up away from it, and he wanted to get his phone out to try to take a picture, and then it kind of was like it was gone. But uh, yeah, that that so that place was definitely haunted. But as far as me, there was only a couple of little things that happened to me, and for the most part, it was especially during the day it was peaceful. There was nothing going on. But at night, yeah, it was a creepy place. Yeah. Keep a place now, to work either way. It sounds like it. Now, Josh, you live in Texas, right? Is this is around Austin? This was in, these two places were in Austin, yeah. Yeah. Wow. A lot of history there down mm -hmm. in Texas. And a lot of haunts. Really crazy because like the city did not stretch that far at, at this time. Uh like like when when I was reading about that area, there is a story that became kind of a legend. And I can't I can go back and look it up and, and tell you, but I couldn't do it right now. But there was a, a famous uh, cowboy who was scalped by the Comanches literally about a mile and a half east of there. And he was oh, left yeah? for dead. Now, this is a crazy story. Um, and, and, and this is a Texas legend. Now, he, he was scalped. You, you guys at home can look this up and fact check it, whatever. He was he was scalped and left for dead just east of there. And, and the name of the street is. Uh, oh, God. Hey Anthony, so that way I can give you the street, y'all can look it up. <laughs> Anyways, it, it, it's it's right right down the street, and it's it's near it's near uh, where Roger Hornsby grew up. He's the famous catcher from the Tigers. Hey, uh, what what was that street that Rio Lotto was on? That street right there. I think it was fifty first. Was it 51st Street? I think it was 51st Street, but I could be wrong. But but just about a mile and a half from there, back before the city was even stretched out that far, back in the eighteen hundreds. He was on, on his property and he was checking his fences and he was he, some Comanches laid down on him and they, they scalped him. So they, they left him under an oak tree to die. Well, later that night, his sister, she had a horrible nightmare that he came to her and was screaming in her bedroom. And so she woke up convinced that something had happened to him. So they went out looking for him. And the next day they found him that laying there by the tree, but he wasn't dead. He lived. He actually Ew. survived. He actually Ouch. survived. Yeah, but it was weird because when they talked to him, he had a dream that he was walking around and he had gone into his sister's house, and he thought that he had made it to safety. And but then when he woke up, he was still laying under the tree, bleeding to death. Oh my gosh! So that's a weird story, and and it happened like right down the road from that place with all the violence and everything else. And I'm a big believer that blood and, and emotions saturate your environment. And Absolutely. things happen. You know? I mean, it goes on and on. So, yeah. Well, that's like the. I, I lived in a super haunted house in downtown Atlanta for a number of years, and uh, a Civil War battle had been fought right there where my house was. And uh, and this place had a very dark energy to it. And a matter of fact, I picked up some ghostly hitchhikers when I lived there. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was it was very dark, and I mean, it, from black masses of like some sort of a ball of energy or a, like a black cloud floated around my apartment one night, and it shot over to me and it knocked me down into my kitchen cabinets. <laughs> you know, that wow. kind of stuff. And and also, um, I had a blanket of flies on my ceiling one night uh, in my hallway. There, it was. It just it felt very demonic. There, it was. It was not nice. You can't leave a bunch of bananas out for too long, though. Yeah, I was gonna say gnats and flies come with with rotten fruit and meat, so you <laughs> probably shouldn't have left it out. But well, it wasn't inside my apartment. It was in the hallway leading to my apartment. So it was. It was like my apartment was safe mostly, and then but that hallway was just really scary. Yeah. So yeah, you had to run. You had to run, duck, and run, take cover. <laughs> right. So Jessica, I got a question. You're going to be on the show with me tomorrow, right? You're coming on. Uh, 
I don't know. Am I? I thought <laughs> I thought I told it? you that I was doing the Halloween show. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, I don't. I don't know if you told me about that, but I'll be there. Yeah, I Absolutely. did. I told you, you that it was going to be you and Ann Celine. We're going to be. Oh, that's right. Is that we're okay? Gonna do, yes. We're going to do a Zoom call, and we're going to have that's a team. right. We're going to let people come on and tell stories, and I'm going to tell a bunch of stories and. I do um, have it on the calendar. I, I have been so busy, Josh. I am so know. sorry. I haven't looked at my calendar today. <laughs> it's Shame on there. For forgetting. Yes, you forgive me for forgetting. I will be there. Absolutely. Yeah. And I'd love to meet Aunt Celine. I can't wait to meet her. I've not met, met her yet. This is the hardest working woman in cryptozoology. I'm telling you. <laughs> She's well, like, you know, she doesn't just do cryptozoology, though. I mean, she she's remote viewing and doing all kinds of I things. I do all sorts of stuff. Yeah. 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 I, I, y'all, I'm just having fun. I am. Yeah, I am. Well, Josh, we have Jeremiah here. So would you like to say hey to Jeremiah? Let's pull up Jeremiah sure. real quick. I know you're friends with him. Sure, so. yeah. Here we go. What's going on, Jer hey, Jeremiah? Hey, guys. guys? Je Josh, Jess, how's it going? Nick? Hey. I still three got of my you favorite, scheduled. You three of my favorite too. people. <laughs> What's up, Josh? I got you scheduled to come on my show, too, but we've been so busy. The I know. Everything got kind of messed up, you know, so it was like I still got you slated to come on, though. I got to get you Beautiful. on. Beautiful. I'm ready yeah. to go, brother. Yeah, and I've been on your show, too. So, all right, guys, Absolutely. I'm going to sign off, dude. You guys have fun. All right. Well, happy oh. Halloween, Josh. Thank you. Okay. All right, Josh. Thank all right. So yeah. Time. That was awesome. Thank you. What's up, Jeremiah? Hey, guys. How's it going? Happy, happy Halloween. You, too. Friend. You, too. Yeah. Have you? Did you go out trick-or-treating with the kids tonight? I did. It was a blast. Yeah. It's a blast. Awesome. A little chilly up here in the Adirondacks, but it, uh, you know, it, uh, the fun made up for it. You know, you should have, <laughs> should have been too chilly in your Sasquatch outfit. Yeah, <laughs> this is true. This is true. <laughs> oh, man, if you did go out in that. They would have been PO'd at you. Woo. Oh, oh. In front of us, we'll get them. We'll get them. Yeah, I would have paid for that for the next few weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, hey Jeremiah, we—I I was out trick or treating with my son tonight too. So uh, I did—I did test the candy to make sure it wasn't poison for him. Tonight. Same here. Yeah, Same here. Got, you got to right. Yeah, you got it. You got it. <laughs> you do well, Jeremiah. Do you have yeah. any kind of interesting, creepy stories that you'd like to talk about tonight? Because we're talking about creepy stuff. I do. I have a very creepy story, and uh, Nick has heard it, uh, you know, one on one on one. Um, but I, I definitely, this is definitely one I think you would love to hear. And Nick, uh, you'd probably love to hear it over again. Uh, I think oh, yeah. you're catching the drift on the one I'm talking about. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, well, it, this happened, we're going back to the late 70s, early 80s. Um, there's a, a gentleman I know very well that I grew up with lives next door to another guy. I'm going to call him Mr. Clark. Um, Mr. Clark uh, was a Vietnam vet, combat Marine during Vietnam. Very tough, rugged Adirondack mountain man. Okay? okay. And every rifle season, he would go up into the mountains and hunt whitetail, hunt bear, whatever, whatnot, you know. Um, well, he went up one week, it was around the opening uh, opening time of, of rifle season, and um, he had been up there, he used to, he'd stay up there for a week at a time, up in the mountains, and, uh, you know, at one point, he started to feel like he was being tracked by something, and he was seeing these very, very, very strange, very strange, large, large hoofed footprints, okay, Ooh on two legs, which is the very, very bizarre. That's just the very bizarre part about it. One of the very bizarre parts about it. Um, now he was carrying a 270, uh, one of the old 7,400, uh, semi-automatic, uh, 270s. They don't make them anymore. Um, they hold, held six shots. Um, now he had been in there about three days. And like I said, he felt like he was being tracked. Now, Nick, you know from your past you're gonna know when you're being tracked you know. a, a gentleman yeah. a gentleman like yeah. that especially right. Right. um about the third or fourth night he was uh by his campfire and he heard some ruckus behind a tree about 100 110 meters away and he looked and there's this thing poking its head from behind the tree and it had he said it 
the gentleman that I heard this story from said uh, had very, very li- large eyes. Nothing this gentleman had ever seen before. And this guy, like I said, is a big time hunter. Killed everything the Adirondacks has to offer. Uh, he had no clue what it was. It sucked its head back behind the tree. And at this point, he was pretty, pretty freaked out. Um, he picked up his rifle and stood there for a second. All of a sudden, this thing comes barging out from behind the tree, hits all fours, okay, starts to make its way towards him, then sit up on two legs and started running straight at him. Now, he emptied that 270 into this thing, okay? Took six shots from this 270 to put this thing down. Now, he brought it back out of the woods, okay? It took him a couple days, from what I hear, uh, from this a very reliable source, it took him a couple days to drag this thing out um, of the of the woods. He wanted to, you know, show and show people, see if anyone knew what the heck this thing was, because it's something he had never seen before. Now, the gentleman that was there, uh, like I said, it was his next door neighbor, said, coming down the road. And pulling in this dry, into his driveway, he could he had an old uh, one of the old C10 uh, Chevys. Am I saying that right, Nick? Yeah. Uh, would have been about a seventy, about a seventy nine, if I'm not mistaken, is what he told me. And he could see you could see this creature in the back, the bed of the truck, with its arms hanging over the windshield. It was so large it would not what? fit in the bed of the truck. And it would not fit in the bed of the truck. Wow. So they had to lift this thing with a backhoe out of the back of the truck to set it on the ground and really analyze this thing. Oh, my God. Like now, a bear or Hogzilla or something. Like yeah, it gets backhoe. even. And Jess, it gets even weirder. <laughs> so okay. as they're examining this thing, they notice the, the weird the weird part about it, the really weird part about it that caught my attention was the description of the eyes. The eyes were human-like. Okay. Pupils, white, and on the side of its head. Right. Like, totally on the side of its head, you know. Um, had a long snout like a horse. It was oh. shaped like a, ho- a horse's snout. And it had snout. hooves, right? So. And, and it had hooves. Um, had a long mane down its back. Um, hands like a human, okay, with long, long claws. Canines, top and bottom canines. Um and the we- another weird part about this whole situation is that it was, uh, y- you know what a blue pit bull looks like? The color that a blue pit bull throws out, it's that, that dark blue with sometimes white markings, right? Mm-hmm. That's what this color, that's what the color of this thing was. It had that bluish pit bull type tint to it. Wow. Um, now, when they, when they got it, once they had it on the ground, they, all the kids, including my buddy, um, they were all, it, he said it looked very sickly, extremely sickly. So the kids and the dogs, they had tons of dogs and the dogs, you know, how dogs will usually get near something dead and they'll sniff it and, and whatnot. And uh, sit their nose. Exactly. Right. <laughs> the <laughs> dogs, like would, right. The dogs would not, the dogs didn't want any part of this thing. <laughs> they stayed right away with it, but the kids were taking sticks and poking this thing in the side, and the sticks were going right through the side of this creature. It's like, like butter. It was like butter. Right? It was like butter. That's weird. It, it's it, like the, butter. The, stick, the sticks were going. The sticks That's were weird. going right through. Yeah, it extremely. Really weird. We said that it probably was so sickly that the skin thinned out underneath all that. Right. Right. Oh. So, something like that. Yeah. I mean, the, the, he said the sticks were going right through it absolutely right through it so weird it's very weird so but they there was a butcher that lived about three miles down the road from where he lived and they loaded it back on the truck they wanted to get a good weight on this thing and the butcher had one of those old uh beef scales and that's it where they would hang the beef and and weigh it and yeah. you know back in the 80s they weren't digital <laughs> you know oh, yeah. um and i they think uh 
Right, exactly. Uh-oh. And they went up to a thousand pounds at that point. Well, when they put this thing on, it wrapped all the way around to the thousand pound mark and all the way back around again. So you're talking 2000 pounds, give or take this thing weight. Um, hmm. And his wife, his wife talked him into, you know, like I said, I'm going to call him Mr. Clark. So Mr. Clark, you know, why, why don't you at least call the DEC in case it's something you can't identify and you know, you should, you should report this. And this was not before he took a Polaroid. Yeah. I don't know if I, I don't know if I would have done the the same thing, but anyway, I I don't know. I I would definitely take a sample and some pictures before I report it. Right. With that, Nick finger. Didn't he take a finger or something? He did. He cut a finger finger. off. Yeah. He had long, (laughs) had long claws. He cut one of them off and he took a Polaroid. Now, okay. I, my, my dad knows this gentleman, um, and I have been dying to go down there and just knock on his door and ask him about this situation and maybe, you know, hopefully, you know, try to get my hands on the Polaroid or at least the finger, or at least, at least the, the finger, the, the claw. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Now, Jessica, so, I've been trying to get Jeremiah to go do this and. You should do it. A little shy, but I bet that finger's in the freezer somewhere. What do y'all bet? Go up there and go there with you. You know, I bet it's in the freezer. I I tell you what, if you two came up here (laughs) and wanted to do this, I would. I would go over there. They're gonna think we're the men in black. We're gonna be like MIBs up in there. Like there we go. They may not trust us. I don't know. Yes, you're There's an idea. Suit uh, jacket and tie. I know. I gotta wear my business suit. I'll wear my camera right. so we don't look suspicious, okay? Exactly. exactly. But, you know, I, and I told my dad several times, why don't you just bring me over there? And he said, Jeremiah, I'm going to tell you something. Um, this, this, like I said before, this he was a tough Adirondack mountain man, Vietnam vet. Um, and back in the day before this happened, he had long, long, blonde, bright blonde hair, the long, long, bright blonde beard my father said over that year this this event scared him so badly he turned like gray almost gray almost gray overnight this scared him i've heard of that happening to people who have experiences like that yes yes interesting yes he turned uh bright 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 gray you know uh from bright blonde to bright gray to silver almost you know over that that's crazy over that, it, that, that yeah. that's just like a shock a shock to the system i guess system, absolutely what absolutely what it is is that it's a uh, a little known and a little not even used hormone in our body and if something affects you that much it does change your hair it does change uh change your skin yes. too but in his case he went white Wow. Um, yeah. I have a couple of white hairs right now. I have a couple. <laughs> Same here. I've never, never gotten. I've seen some weird stuff, y'all. I've seen some real weird stuff. But uh, yeah, I, maybe that's for each alien I've encountered. I have a gray hair now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm starting to get him too, Jess. Don't, don't, don't yeah, feel bad. I know. I, oh my that's gosh. That's why I like to. Uh, okay. gray no, that's why I like to kind of keep like the beard clean. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah the the do- dogs wouldn't go near it um he but like i said in the kid the kids were were poking sticks in it going right through um what really gets me is the hoof the hoof part you know how this thing walked on two legs with a set of hoofs um it did when it was charging him, like I said, it did get down on all fours, but it popped right back up and came at him on two legs. Now, to take six shots from a 270, I mean, that's pretty, that's pretty unreal. I mean, yeah. usually, Nick, you know as well as I do, yes, you both know that, that 270 is, is a pretty, uh, you know, that throws out some velocity. Yeah. But you got to remember, if this thing weighed 2,000 plus pounds, it's yeah. got a bone thickness of at least four inches, maybe five. 
True. So, I mean, and the muscle on in front of it and everything, because these things don't have fat on them. They got right. real muscle. So whatever. Well, it exactly. doesn't even sound like muscle if the stick went through it. Is that muscle, though? I mean, I don't know. You know, John that, John has a good question. Could it have been a goat man? It sounds kind of like a goat man. Not the way he dis- no? not the description I got. There was no uh not 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 the way not the way I'm thinking it. I mean it, it, I did have a it, did I in one thing I forgot to mention, it did have a tail. Like it a almost not? like a mm-hmm. it did. Like a oh, horse. It, it oh, had the mane like a horse, so it had a tail like a horse. Yeah, it's extremely bizarre. Yeah. Um, I, the I color, love hearing these stories, though. But this, this is weird. There's so many it, cryptids it, out there. It, it, there is. Even and this goes to prove. I mean, even ones we they're out there. Ones we don't even study or know about. You know. Yeah. Um, did, they, did they ever say how uh, long this thing was? How tall? It how long it was? Yeah. About eight feet. He said, from what he can, what he can tell, especially when it was charging at him. You know, when it was on two legs, he would have to guesstimate eight feet I from mean, what I heard from this other gentleman. I understand the stick went through the skin, but uh, it had to have some kind of muscle on it to weigh 2,000 plus pounds. I mean, I, it had to have. You know, the body it, it had a skin disease of some sort. Yes. There's a lot of things out there in the forest do have. I yes. Mean, just, just last week, I was out there with my team, and uh, we saw several deer that had really horrible mange. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, and, and bear. We I've seen bears with mange too. Yeah. yeah yes. Really, and it was really bad. And uh, the other part of their their hair was a, a dark uh, gray color because they're getting their uh, winter coat now. So they went from beige to to dark gray to, to fit in with the trees and everything. So yeah, it's, it's not a possibility that you know it didn't have a it did have a lot of muscle, but the skin probably had a disease on it. And think about even with a disease weighing that much, you know. Oh yeah. That that's the that's the one of the that's a that's it's crazy. I mean, if this thing had been in full health, which we're we're presuming it was sick, if this thing had been sick, and you know, and not been sick but in full health, think how much would this thing have weighed, you know? And I get wow. in when it was yeah. in, like I said, when it was in the back of the truck, it, it wouldn't fit in the bed, so. It was slumped over the driver's window with its arms totally stretched out. Um, now, the DEC, when they got it, just like I told you about that case that, you know, my father told me about that, you know, he remembers him being in the state police when that Sasquatch was shot. DEC, after he called them, they did show up with a, they showed up with a, with a flatbed once again, and they took this thing. Oh, my gosh. And then they so, had the little mind, the mind wiper outer, like they have on MIB, where they put like the in your face and wipe right. your memory. <laughs> yeah, I wipe right the memory. Yeah, oh they, my gosh, they took that's it. That's crazy. Yeah. I, so, so our our government or whoever took that is fully aware of this weird thing. I mean, it could be a chimera, something that they created, for all we know. It, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It could be like a human yeah. horse hybrid or some kind of giant it, nephilim or something. You know. It, and I've thought about that, you know, mm-hmm. especially with the human eyes, you know, the, the human eyes on the directly on the side of its head. But uh, according to the gentleman that told me this story, um, they were they looked like my eyes. They looked like your eyes. They, they were human, human eyes on the side of its head. But it had a long mm-hmm. snout. And he said you could have if you didn't know any better, you would look at the head and say it was a, a, a horse's head. There was no. I've had people say, well, was it a, a Wendigo? Uh, it doesn't sound oh, like yeah. that. D- doesn't, I mean, you know, I know some people report them having antlers. Some people report them not having antlers. This this did not. Um, yeah. But then again, it doesn't really, it doesn't mean anything. Um, but he did take a sample, like I said, of the finger, uh, a claw. Um, before he called the DEC and he took a Polaroid. Now that I, I would, I would, what would I do to get my hands on that Polaroid and that claw? Right? Because Polaroid, you can't. I mean, you can't really mess with a Polaroid. You know. No. 
like you, you can with photos nowadays. You know, um, it, it, yeah, this this story has just blown my mind for since I since I heard it. And like I said, my dad knows this guy very well, and he's begged me, Jeremiah, whatever you do, I know this is your passion, but whatever whatever you do, do not go down there and bring this up to him. Oh, you know, well maybe maybe whatever. you shouldn't. I don't know. Maybe you should go take him some cookies, and then something, and then right? Some Offer him, hey, you want to sit have down? Have your wife bake a pie. You guys go together and just be good neighbors. I'll bring him some chicken fingers. So. <laughs> some chicken there, fingers. There we go. Some finger we all, <laughs> the three of us can all bring him something. You know, and see how, we'll see how that works out. Three. It'll Thank be subtle hints. Fingers. Yeah, You're subtle right. hints. Chicken fingers, finger foods, anything you don't to have, have to with fingers. Have that finger from. <laughs> Years ago, you're like speaking of fingers. We heard you might have an extra finger in your freezer. <laughs> right, right, right. Exactly, exactly. That is really now, I, wild. I love it though. This is a good yeah, story. and as far as the hoofs go, I, I like I, I told Nick when we were when I told him about this. Um, I don't know if they were like a horse's hoof or if they were you know different. That was not mentioned to me. Uh, the hoofs in detail, but I do know. From what I was told, that it did have hoofs. Um, the shoulders were extremely, extremely wide. Um, and like I said, the mane went right down, right down its back, uh, and it did have, did have the tail. But I guess uh, this thing was ungodly, ungodly huge. I mean, you know, and for the for the dogs not to go near it and not want anything to do with it, that really that says something to me too. It does. Either number one, they knew it was sick, or it wasn't something they wanted anything to do with, or both. I would say probably both. You know. Yeah. Wow. Um, but there's a whole lot of weirdness to to that being. But you know, seeing the things that I've seen, especially through remote viewing, I mean, I've experienced firsthand a lot of weird, strange, high strangeness. Including yes. ETs, aliens. I mean, because this could be some sort of an alien as well, some it sort of extraterrestrial. Could be. Yeah, could be. there's a whole lot of different stuff this could be. But I've also remote viewed these weird underground facilities where these chimeras are being made, and all over the world. Yes, um, there's a lot of weird combinations of like human DNA and animals being combined together. So we we don't right. know what's going on You're in those right. labs. Through a portal, for all we know, and mm -hmm. it didn't have couldn't find anything to eat and it started to get sick or maybe it got sick from all the stuff out there in the woods. It, it, it very well, very well could have. It very, yeah. very well could have. And uh, just like I was telling you, Jess, my dad told me the story about the uh, Sasquatch that was shot in Brandon, New York back in the uh, early eighties. The one of the gentlemen from the DC made a comment. When he said, you know, he asked the guy, what, what, what is this thing? And yeah. he said, it's uh, something that's not supposed to be out here. Yeah. You know, kind of like, kind of like the same comment the other one made about the Sasquatch, something that's not supposed to exist. Well, you know, this is along the same line, something that's not yeah. supposed to be out here, which something that's not supposed to be out here. Well, where is it supposed to be? Was exactly. it supposed to be hidden and being worked on or, or what, you know? Yeah. It just, just very, very bizarre, you know? And it, uh, not only was it blue, like a pit bull, uh, it wasn't a solid blue. It had white, white stripes throughout it. Stripes? Like a zebra? Kind of? Like a zebra. Or, or brindle? Yeah. Oh. Br brindle. Yes. Thank you. That's, that's yeah. a perfect, perfect. That's how it was described me. Brindle. Like a brindle, oh a blue gosh. brindle pit bull. Yes. This sounds like a remote viewing investigation target. I, it does. Right. That would be, I was going to say, I could maybe you could look into this, you know. Maybe, uh, I mean, I, I definitely could. Yeah, we'll talk know. about it. Hey, we'll, yeah, we'll, for sure. we'll talk about it, Jeremiah. Yeah, for sure. Jeremiah, this is an amazing story. Oh, my gosh. Thank you so much for coming on and, and sharing Absolutely. that with us tonight. Absolutely. I figured, figured yeah. you'd like it. Absolutely. This is the coolest story I've heard in a while. I'm not going to lie. Okay. It's very bizarre. What's happening, Nick? Is there anybody in the queue? Yes, we've got Daryl here. Now let's pull Daryl up. Now I'm not sure if he's actually if his if his equipment's working. So let's add him. We're gonna add him to the stream before Jeremiah leaves. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Daryl, are you there? There I'm he here. is. I'm All here. right. Daryl. Good to hey, see you. Hey Jeremiah, how are you, buddy? 
Nick, What's up, buddy? Uh, How's it going? Uh, hey. It hasn't been too long since we were talking, so good yeah. to see you guys and uh, you too, Jessica. Thank you, Daryl. It's nice to meet you finally. I hate to interrupt you guys earlier, but I was we have storms here on the ocean every night, and I was afraid my equipment wouldn't work. So uh, between we, my son and I, we got it going. So testing. We, we were excited to see you earlier. Yes, but we, we figured hey, you were testing. In like that. It wasn't intentional. So I it, we were backstage. <laughs> yeah, we were backstage. Okay. We weren't on air. Yeah, good, that was good. fun. Yeah. Good. Well, great. Well, Jeremiah, thank you for being here tonight. We really, my, my, we my really pleasure, appreciate Jess. you. Okay. My well, pleasure. Listen, we'll talk. We're going to talk. Hang around, Jeremiah. You're welcome to stay. Yeah. Or you're welcome to stay too, if you want and hang out for me. Yeah. yeah. yeah I mean, it's all, it's up to you guys. I, I, I'd like to, I like that. I wouldn't let's, mind listening. Let's hang out. The more I don't the mind, I don't mind. The more the you, I don't mind you uh, sharing the story with me or helping me through this. I don't really have anything strongly prepared, but. <laughs> I was going to talk do. about a few different <laughs> things, uh, but whenever you guys are ready, let me know, and I'll, yeah. I'll start on what I, I, I thought about several things, and of course, I was uh, on uh, Jeremiah and Nick's show last night, the Legends show, and uh, on my part two and three, I guess I would put it together after one, pretty much told my encounters on there, besides just some regular ones i've had researching over the years but not as crazy as a couple of those were but uh i, I kind of wanted to talk about the lbl because uh, mm -hmm. i've really been on top of that most of my life but i only i only grew up about an hour from there and uh, of course uh, martin and i were back there last week and spent a day and part of the night and it's it's such a strange place I mean, I, I don't think I've ever been in a place that's quite as strange as the LBL. And when I say strange, you never know what you're going to encounter or hear or see there. So uh, yeah. I wanted to kind of go back on some of the history on that, that, that I've known most of my life. You know, that, that place was mainly settled back in the 1700s by trappers and French people that came in there and they had encountered what they call the Lurarug, similar to what they have in New Orleans, but it's a little different in spelling. Um, and it was a large canine type beast, half man and half beast that they had seen. And uh, yeah. the Pawnee Indians were terrified of it. They called it the Shamay of their, one of those Shaman men who had turned into a uh, shapeshifter. And that's how that story supposedly got started. And there's so many uh, recounts of stories of early settlers watching this creature tear their animals apart through their windows in the middle of the night. And it was just terrorizing the settlers in that area. And uh, in, even in the early 1800s and later into the 1800s. But that place is so full of... Uh, different type things. There's uh, over 270 cemeteries there. And this is a vast area. If, if, of course, Nick has been there. I know he and uh, DA were there, I think, last year. But uh, there's some area. I've been I've been there quite a few times. But last week was the probably the first time I'd ever been that far back in there. And it goes for literally ever. There are, there are roads that go into other roads, and if you didn't know your way out of there, I don't know how you'd find your way. So. <laughs> wow. Yeah, mm. I mean, I would not want to get lost to the LBL. That's mm. the last place I want to get lost. You know, well, it's, uh, It seems to be a popular subject now, but yeah. it's always yes. been pretty popular about around my area. But uh, yeah. uh, uh, going, as, going back as far as the early 1900s, you know, when and then when they there were so many sightings at that time and a lot of the locals don't like to talk about it because they're offended by it because yeah. a lot of them's land was taken to flood that area by TVA, which mm -hmm. uh, turned that into the Kentucky Lake area. Right. But, uh, wow. there's, there still today, there's so many people who see this creature or creatures. I don't think there's one. I think there's more than one. But uh, they're, they're seen too often. Uh, I know this is a subject we hear a lot, but it's it's something that that I feel like that we need to find an answer to. And it seems like I'm not getting into the government issues. I don't really know. 
enough to talk about that. I just know what I hear. But, uh, you know, we, we were there last week, Martin and I, and uh, I've been there no telling how many hundreds of times over my lifetime and camped there, mostly in the southern end. Now, the southern end doesn't really have that many sightings of, of the beast or the dog man. Uh, it has mostly Bigfoot sightings. But when you get into the northern end, it's where you have most of your uh, dog man and, and the actual what they call the LBL creature or the beast of LBL. And that was called the Twin Rivers before it was flooded. And there were thousands of people in that area that were run out of their farms and they flooded it against their will. A lot of people think that uh, that has a lot to do with the creature being as bad or as often as it's seen because of the people being so well, so done so wrong by the government. And mm -hmm. uh, the people who live in that area, uh, they know about it. They don't like to talk about it, but you get 20 miles out from the northern side and just regular people start talking about it. Sightings they've had or coon hunters been in the woods and this thing coming after them and running their dogs out. So uh, it, it's, it's kind mm -hmm. of a, to me, it's one of the most frightening things that's real. And uh, it, it, it's a nonstop issue because it's sightings continue. And, yeah. uh, you know, we, Martin Groves and I were there last week and we were there uh, all day Monday and stayed most of the night Monday night and we had several things that we seen and we only seen one particular thing that we couldn't figure out and I told Nick and Jeremiah about that last night but uh, that was the strangest thing I've ever seen in my lifetime and uh, it was very different uh, a huge head uh, about half the size of our truck windshield with glowing eyes like flashlights Never seen mm -hmm. anything like that. And uh, it was on the ground, which we had talked about last night. But uh, th this, these creatures are there. Uh, I, I think that I don't know about how many people are missing. I don't know how many people are. I just know what I hear. I don't think anybody knows that number. Mm -hmm. um, I also think that there's other things there. There's all types of sightings of this light that continues down Highway 60 and 80 and follows people in their cars and scares them to death. Uh, wow. It's supposed to be of some truck driver that was killed on the intersection there or something. And that's pretty well talked about normally, too. Plus, the Civil War, Civil War ghosts, they see there normally. Mm -hmm. So it's a real spiritual place. I don't think it's all just the beast of the LBL. Wow. It's an area of high strangeness. A lot of times, mm -hmm. you know, m like my team goes out and we research several areas around the South and they're all comparable to what you see on Skinwalker Ranch, that kind of stuff. A lot of times when there's one phenomenon, there's a bunch of them mm -hmm. and, uh, and they're, they're all, I, not to say they're all connected. Like I've never seen a Bigfoot get in a spaceship, <laughs> you know, but hey. in some way they're connected. I definitely believe they're all connected. Mm -hmm. uh, no doubt about that. Uh, orbs too. So orbs. Uh, they're all yeah. connected to paranormal. Uh, all that's connected in some way. Yeah. Um, I, I think that the, the, the more the sightings that, that I think there's more sightings there now than there's ever been. And I, a big reason for that, I think too, there's more people in the woods looking for Bigfoot and, and, and these type of creatures. I think that has yeah. a lot to do with it. Yeah. But um, I know that there are a lot of reports on the Bay areas of people seeing these creatures running up and down the beach and scared to death to go close yeah. to the beach. So it continues and it hadn't slowed down any, but I can't top mm -hmm. that story Jeremiah had. That was pretty impressive. But, <laughs> Just, uh, is it, is very very that weird. That, that, <laughs> that was definitely one of the most different ones I've heard, but, uh, See, I think I may be the last one on here tonight. Am I correct with that? <laughs> well, we we actually have a, a crew uh, from Texas Front Ports coming on later. Oh, okay. So, yeah, right. we got Tex and Rob and Jason coming on. Oh, that's a good one. And yeah. DA Roberts. So we, we still got. Okay, DA's yeah. coming on. DA's a good friend. Uh, love to watch Tex. Uh, they're, yeah. they're, they're both good too. But 
you know, you can ask me if you want to ask me a question about these things. You're welcome to because I've been really doing a lot of research the last couple of years, and I'm starting to learn a lot more. But you don't learn any more than being on boots on the ground out there and, and looking. That's right. For them. So that's, right. that's yeah. the only way you're going to find mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm interested to know um, because I've never been to the LBL, but I have done some remote viewing of the attacks out there and. Uh, and I, I've seen that there's a variety of creatures and by creatures, I'm, I'm referring to dogman, the dogman species. Well, that's the most common one. Yeah, that's the yeah. one you hear about the most. And of course, that's definitely the most popular one because mm -hmm. it's the one that puts fear in more people than anything else also. So mm -hmm. uh, we found some humongous tracks there last week in the bay. And mm -hmm. uh, these tracks were... With a heel, they were six to eight inches, just the foot, the paw print. And with a heel, they were quite a bit bigger than that. So, you know, it takes a good sized creature to make that type of track. So, yeah. I mean, j not just nothing that doesn't exist makes a track. So uh, the these things are definitely there and they're, and they're real. Uh, I, like I said, the people in the area, when you go to talk to them about it, they don't really want to talk much about it. Mm -hmm. And it, that's kind of surprising. But when you get up in the north end, they're more open to talk to you about what they've seen, too. And there's a lot of people around that area that see these creatures on a regular basis. So mm -hmm. they're, they're definitely there. Uh, I think that uh, as far as the, the 1982 massacre that I've heard about all, most of my life, where the family was killed in the camper on, there in the north end, uh, that the people, some people say that's not true and other people say it is. And there are no official records that I've personally seen, but I've got friends that have seen some. So I believe it did happen. Um, also a witness came forth about a year ago and that was supposedly there when it happened. And I'm not quite sure about that, but he states that he was. And uh, I think, I think, uh, I don't know, was it Nick I heard mention or maybe somebody else that somebody supposedly had uh, uh, death records of those people. Have you heard that, Nick? Yeah, they, um, there was a, um, there's something that came out, I believe Jody Cook has some information on that. Uh, that's the founder of the NADP. Uh, yeah, cool. I believe the, the, the man that was the father, you know, the man that was there, in 82 with his family. I believe his brother has the records. Okay. And, um, just to back up a little bit, Daryl, that, that so-called <laughs> uh, charlatan, I mean, um, uh, fellow that says he was a survivor. Right. Um, no, <laughs> there was no survivor of LBL. There was four people there and four people only. A mom, a dad, a boy, and a, and a little girl. And that was it. I mean, well, that, that's that's my belief also, but I've heard yeah. about this survivor. And... Well, I interviewed him. I interviewed him twice. Uh, one on Josh. Well, I guess it was both times on Josh Turner's show. And uh, now I've proven to myself and to a lot of people that no, he was uh, he was just doing it just to get notoriety. I mean, that that really takes down cryptozoology when people do things like that. Oh, yeah, 100 really does. Yeah. It, it makes all the real cannibal stories look bad. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, I come forth you know, like that. Jeremiah and I had uh, Jessica on, and Jessica, we asked you how many people did you see when you remote viewed it? There were four people there, four. yeah. Wow. Yeah, I did. I detected four people in the environment. I never. I didn't know there was another person that he even said they were there. Mm -hmm. um, I did. I had detected four people in the environment, and uh, yeah, it was. It was so. Wow. It was so um, brutal. Let's just say it was such a brutal attack. Uh, those there were two creatures that attacked those four people. Uh, that there were right. two in the environment for sure, right. and the one. Um, the one person who says he was there, first of all, I didn't detect him. Now, that does not mean he wasn't there. Okay. But with the the way that these creatures uh, attack these people, I think that they would have smelled the fear on that kid. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I, that's all I'm, I, I don't know. Like I said, I, I just never detected another person there. Um, but I think that it, 
had someone else been there, I, I personally, this is just my personal belief. I think they would have smelled the fear on him. I it think you're exactly fear, right. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. I and believe he, you're exactly right. He claims to have shot a, uh, a shotgun, you know, blast at one of the creatures and hit it and knocked it down. I mean, yeah. that's something you would have detected in your remote view. Well, right? I, d I did detect a gunshot. Right. I absolutely the did. was supposedly the one that shot it. Uh, I could not tell you who shot it, but there was definitely a gun blast of some sort. Well, um, I heard it was a 410 shotgun, Nick. Did you hear yeah. the same thing? Yeah. That's exactly yeah. what I heard, Jeremiah. Yeah. I, heard yeah. I, I don't believe a 410 would even damage a dog. Yeah. No, we just irritate him. Yeah. 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 According yeah. to this guy, he knocked him down. And my yeah. interview, and some people want to call it an interrogation of him. My my interview of him showed that you know all his facts are totally bogus because mm. he claims that the police brought him back or agents of the government brought him back to the scene of the crime and let him look into the camper. No, first of all, fifteen year old boy, he would be that, that would be dumb on the police part because that would traumatize you know a fifteen year old. And number two. Yeah. He's not just a survivor, a witness. He's a suspect. Mm -hmm. you now, if he left the area, he's a suspect. And how did they know where to find him? That's what I want to know. How would they know to find him at this farmhouse down the road? <laughs> well, so, from what I've what I've getting from dog man by people I've talked to anyway, their their sense alone is strong enough to find you. Yeah, I, I can't imagine somebody being head up in the axle of any camper and the dog man not be able to find them. And so, holding on to yeah. a hot pipe that could uh, yeah. melt your skin because they had just stopped like 25 minutes before the event happened. And also, he says it was a he says it wasn't a camper. All the information, Daryl, that I've had collected and I've been there eight times over the years and I've interviewed people. I spoke to people left and right. I've read over every piece I could find, said it was a pull-along camper. This guy's saying that it was a motorhome, a big uh, motorhome. No, I, I'm, I'm sorry. No. Well, I in my data, I didn't know anything about this. I was actually asked to remote view this by Tex, who's actually going to, he's waiting backstage. He's going to come out up in a minute. Right. But uh, Tex from Texas Front Porch and... Uh, I didn't know the first thing about this. I didn't even know what the LBL was. I'm, I'm a Bigfoot field researcher. I didn't know about Dogman. I didn't know a whole lot until I met these guys. Um, and so, well, I but don't I don't think any of us know enough. Yeah, sure. I, uh, I don't know. I still don't know anything about him. But but I did sketch a picture, and uh, when I was remote viewing it, and there was a vehicle with something being pulled behind. There was something being pulled behind it right. in the sketch that I made. Right. So well, the, you know, the, the stories I've heard since I was growing up, it was pulled behind. And I've heard right. that from yeah. police officers myself okay. that told me that. I can, they, yeah. also, they also <laughs> told me a lot of different things that contradicted the story that I heard from this guy. I was told the girl was found in the little girl was found in a tree. In a tree, right. And he says yes. that she wasn't found in a tree. And uh, one of the officers supposedly had blood drip down on his on his head or his shirt, right. and that's how they found the girl in the tree. So. She was in the tree, right? Right, yeah. right. And uh, I was also told years ago that that uh, the perfume that the lady was wearing in the camper, they thought is what brought these creatures out. It was some type of different perfume that draw the creatures to the area. I don't know how true that is, but I've heard that all my life. From yeah, I heard, I've heard that. I didn't pick up on that when I remote viewed it. Now, listen, I, I don't know the first thing about it. And I, I, I don't, I don't know nothing about nothing, <laughs> but I did well, remote view that. And I didn't pick up on that. I didn't pick up on any kind of cologne or perfume that brought them in. It was just, uh, those people had encroached on their territory is what, uh, what I was picking up on was that that was their territory. And they were, it was almost like those creatures had been let out to feed on those I people. Think, I, I'm not mm. sure that they're not let out. I'm, I'm really not. I think they are. Uh, uh, I, I picked up that those particular ones had escaped some sort of, they were, they had been caged before. I, I, that wouldn't surprise me. It really would. Mm -hmm. uh, that, yeah. that's, that's, that's very frightening <laughs> to think something like that is out there and, 
and we yeah. and people know about it and they're letting it just right. you know I, my main concern is you've got and that's the biggest thing with my friend martin Groves. you know he he wasn't really trying to stir up controversy he's mm -hmm. his theory is you know we need to let people know you don't want to take your family into a place like that and not know anything about it thank and you just be walking out in the woods and, yeah. and not come back so yeah uh, that part is the most startling part to me that we don't have enough. The quietness is what bothers me when you go there. You know, they only have they only have two park rangers working that area now. They've wow. Cut, they, they've cut completely back on the actual rangers. I'm told there's only two in that area. And they pretty much spend their day just going to the camping sites and, and collecting the receipts right. and the cash out of the boxes and they have very little time to do any patrolling or actually they just don't have time to do it and not enough man coverage yeah. but well that's uh, how I, it is at a lot of our national parks right now uh i mean mm -hmm. I, I i spend time at some national parks myself and uh they're very understaffed right now mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Sure tremendously understaffed daryl i've been there like eight times and all the times i've been there I've never seen a deer run by. Have you? You know, I was the other night when we were there, Martin and I were there real late the other night. And basically in the daytime, we went back to his original site where it right. happened, you know, 30 years ago nearly. And um, that was, uh, I had a, I have, I have a feeling in me too. I don't know how to explain it where I can pick up on things and, Martin has that same thing in him, and we've always had that. And I don't know what to call it, but it's I can feel at times when Bigfoot's near. Uh, I don't know how I do it, but they find me. I, I've seen a lot of them. Yeah. And uh, the same thing with Martin. And uh, it's hard for me to tell you that I get that feeling with Dogman because I don't know how, how many times I've been around them. I've only mm -hmm. really seen one. And uh, the other night I seen what I think was a dog man. I'm not 100% sure, but that's what we think we seen. But, uh, you know, that um, I've been to that campsite four times, uh, not nearly as many times as you have. But I get a weird feeling when I go in there. So it, it, it's a feeling that something is still in that area. And I don't know what that feeling is, but. I would say maybe it's, it's it's a part of a little bit of still interfere of being in that area, but but it's also mm -hmm. something else too. And and I'm not the only one that gets that feeling. There's other people I know that go in there. Uh, Joe and Jesse uh, from Hellbin Holler have been up there so many times. So I really worry about their safety. I tell them all the time, be real careful going in there. Uh, oh yeah. You know you don't know. Uh, I, I'm not even sure. I, this probably sounds off the wall, it is, but I'm not even sure that a weapon will kill some of these things. But uh, yeah. I'm not sure that they're, they're not maybe interdimensional and and can't be killed. But uh, I don't know that, but I have a feeling that some of them may be. Yeah. What do you think, Jeremiah? I think, uh, you know, for the ones that c it could be interdimensional, I think my, and this is just my personal opinion, Daryl, I think when they're in our realm, our dimension, I think they can be killed, can be shot, they can bleed, you know. But once they, you know, cross over or do do what they do and uh, go back into into their or back doing what they do on the other side, I don't think. I kind of on agreement with you. I don't think a bullet may be able to touch them, but I think when they're here in front of us, I think they. You know, probably yeah, could they can be. Maybe I mean, maybe there's some of them, like you said. Maybe there's some that that can't be. But you know, that's that's just my opinion, just my yeah. my theory on it. When they're here, they have to go by our atmospheric rule. Exactly, they have to eat, they have to defecate, they have to, you know, all that good stuff. You know, flesh and blood, flesh and blood creature. Yeah. Yeah. Right. If they're here, yeah. my electronic flashbang. Yeah. Mess with them and my pepper spray right. with them and everything else. Yeah. Well, you know, my team, we call it the X factor. There's an X factor to yeah. all of these cryptids. And that is, by that, I mean, they could be interdimensional. They could just 
change their frequency where we can't see them anymore. Right. I mean, it, it could be anything. Uh, sure. I mean, they could be getting shot up into a spacecraft for all I know. I have no idea. <laughs> but, you know, one, one thing about it, I 100% <laughs> think they're all connected somehow. I Me really too, Daryl. All yes. of them are connected. The orbs, the aliens, all yeah. of them mm. are somehow connected. You know, I, I've been around so many Bigfoot that I've never seen one actually cloak, but I've seen one walk behind a tree and it never came out anywhere. So I've it, heard that it, a went, lot. it went somewhere. Yeah. I don't know where it went, but yeah. you know, uh, it's very yeah. strange that those things can do that. But, you know, Dr. Matthew Johnson's in our group, and I really thank a lot of that guy, you know. 10 or 15 years ago, I didn't believe anything he said, but the, the more I've been in the woods and the more things I've seen, I'm, I'm beginning to think that he's pretty much spot on. So uh, yeah. on a lot of his issues anyway, he's a really smart guy, but he says they live in the trees. So I don't know. I've heard that. that. I've heard that too. Yeah, Daryl, you have an amazing group on Facebook. It's called Bigfoot Believers and Other Creatures. I'm a member. I've joined it. I love it. Yeah, everybody, please go and, and join that uh, group, on Facebook. Uh, great group, yep. Well, it is a great group. It's a great group because of my people, not because of me. But, <laughs> you know, I've got uh, every one of you guys are moderators on there, and they've taken the group expert off now. Uh, after, okay. you get a, mm. after you get a certain a number of people in your group, you no longer have experts. It's only moderators. Oh, so well, you morning. just got too popular. Yeah. Well, I don't, I don't know about that, but I mean, I, we, we, we're, we're growing really fast and, and, and that's a good thing because we can all help each other learn. You know, that's right. Absolutely. We're all open-minded. And so Daryl yes. and Jeremiah, thank you all so much for being here with us tonight. This has been awesome. Daryl, I'm, I'm gonna, I need to get you on Spaced Out Radio too. Okay. So I, I told you I would be on this month and I'll be more than happy to. Yes. And oh, I, I would I, love it. I, I, I'm sorry I didn't have a better story prepared, but I've been wanting to talk about oh, LBS for quite a while, while, but. It was um, fantastic. It was, it was, it was awesome, fantastic. Today. I Both appreciate, of y'all. appreciate yes. all of you. Jeremiah has been such a good friend to me. Uh, Nick, <laughs> I've known since he started the uh, the dog man project I was first his first members yeah. and and we've been together a while there and jeremiah and i've come real close lately and, and i'm looking forward to being on your show jessica well, You're heck just, yeah. I, I think you do a great job Thank so, you. Uh, I, I, enjoy your, I enjoy your shows, and thank you. I, I think I watched you and Nick's show about four times. Y'all had a, <laughs> about a couple of week, couple of month, maybe a month ago. And, well, thank you. Uh, I appreciate fun, that. But, well, I mean what I'm saying. I appreciate you guys having me on. It's, I'm honored to be here. Thank you very much. And we appreciate you too, and happy Halloween, Daryl and Jeremiah. Hey, thank you. All. You too, Jess. You. Y'all okay. have, yeah, you all too, have a good night. Thank you very much. Yes, y'all have guys. a great night. I'm gonna, we're going to pull up Texas Front Porch now. Bye, all right. y'all. Take care. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Now, you guys, Nick, we have Texas Front Porch here. Yeah. All right. So we Thanks have we have Mr. Tex Wesson himself. Tex. We have Jason. I'm bringing them up in order of how they showed up tonight. And we also <laughs> have Mr. Bigfoot Michigan Rob. Oh, wow. Look at this. Yeah. All right. Man, what a crowd. What a motley crew we got here right now. It doesn't well, get more motley you, you than you that. It is, it is pretty scary. It's really scary. Yes. We the are motley motley What's motley up? Crew. Happy Halloween, Halloween y'all. Guys, we had a uh, fantastic bunch of interviews. I don't know if you were watching, but. Yeah, no, <laughs> good, great show thus far. Yeah. With you guys here. This would be great. Yes. Well, Thank it's all downhill here. from here anyway. <laughs> we're, the clean, we're, we're the cleanup crew. No, oh I man, he it... might want to try to come on. I don't know if he's going to make it. Yeah, well, DA said he we're, might come we're on. Back and clean up. Mm. That's right. <laughs> Good old Henry Aaron. Yeah, well, you guys had a great show tonight too. I was in there. I was listening. I I was out trick or treating tonight with my son. Uh, you guys know I I have to do that, and and I got home and I had to take a shower because I was really sweaty today uh, from trick or treating, and so I was listening to you guys though. Okay. Uh, but I, w I may not have been in the chat, but I was definitely listening. So, yeah. What What would you guys like to talk about tonight? We, we're kind of asking everyone for a scary story what tonight. Spooky and scary. One of your worst. Yeah. Yeah. Absolute best worst. Well, who well, wants to go first? Y'all go. Y'all go right ahead, and and because you know I'm long winded. 
Yeah, well, we got, what do we got? Well, we got, it's 135 or 20, 22 seconds to count. We've got, Jason, yeah, we've, we've Jason, got Jason, you want to go? Minutes. You want to go? Then Rob, I'll go second. please. You're, you're the one who's got the uh, Halloween orange on. Well, I, I do have Halloween orange. It's just yes, got, very I, festive. I, I was wondering what to do tonight. You know, I I'm, I just, I didn't want to do Dogman or, or Bigfoot because I've been doing quite a bit of that as yes. of late. We been we talked ghosts with Josh. Charlie. We did. I heard yeah. that. I heard part of that, and I'm going to go with the ghost story to get okay. things rolling. For Let's this do the segment. ghost story. Go for it. And uh, I don't know that anybody's heard this one. This um, took place uh, in my uh, area where I grew up, and in, in Southern Dearborn Heights, Michigan. <laughs> this this road in my town was coined Dead Man's Curve. Back in the early to late 60s, actually, I think it was 1967, to be totally honest with you. There was a, right inside the subdivision, there was a, a small a road that ran, and all of a sudden, it would just take a steep and sharp curve. In fact, the speed limit was posted at like five miles an hour, which to me, I've driven down it. That's much too fast. Must have been a group. Uh, uh, it was uh, a girl and a guy in her early twenties that were speeding down this road, and it was nighttime. And upon reaching the curve, they were doing. From the report that I read, they were doing at least over forty miles an hour, and they were in a convertible. Now this curve is also lined. There's a creek there, and it's lined by the forest. The forest line. Or I should say a wood line because there's no forest in southern Dearborn Heights. But it's the depth of the woods is maybe 60 to 100 yards on either side. Well, they took this curve going about 40 miles an hour straight on. They hit it. And they proceeded to caroom into the creek. Now, as the car was coming down, there's a bridge sitting there. And... The, the, the man was driving and the girl was in the passenger seat. They both had seat belts on, which I found strange. I don't think anybody wore a seatbelt in the 60s. But, <laughs> the girl, but they both were immediately killed on impact. But the girl's top of her head hit the bottom of the bridge on the downslope of the vehicle. And her, she got decapitated. Ooh. Hence, coining the phrase dead man's curve. So we heard this tale as kids growing up. And when I was uh, my my middle teens, a group of us would always going would always go down to this part to try to conjure up the spirit of the ghost because we heard that a lot of strange things happened down here, mm -hmm. and this was also inside of a subdivision or community which was lined with homes, and a lot of people were really freaked out at night. They would hear lots of different noises and things. Never claimed to see a ghost. Now going forward, so we we were we had been going down there. Two of my bu good buddies, we've been going down there for years, never saw anything. It ended up being a place where we'd have a campfire, you know, and sneak away from mom and dad and tell haunted stories and try to see if we could find anything. So about when I was eighteen years old in high school, me and my buddy Brian and Darren, we happened to be go. We're down at the creek. It's nighttime, so we had a little bonfire going. I think we had like a 12 pack of beer or something. We're sit, kicking back and just saying, Hey, there's no ghosts out here. No ghosts out here. So again, no ghosts, no spirits, no activity. We decided to get home. We still had a curfew. So we managed up the Creek and we go down this trail that leads out of the Creek line uh, into the subdivision. When the three of us, all of a sudden we stop and we're walking and we happen to turn around something odd. We thought something odd. We felt something odd. We turn around, and in the distance, we see this glowing. I'm going to call it an entity. We didn't think that at the time. We thought it would look like a, a, just a light. And so we stopped looking at what the heck is this approaching up the trail? We're still staring at it, staring at it. Now, this, this glowing light started out like as a ball. Then this ball proceeds to elongate. And started to take a shape. And it takes the shape of what appears to be an apparition, a ghost. And it kept getting closer and closer. Now maybe it's about 90 feet away. 
And now the shape that it was morphing into turned into what appeared to be a woman. You could see long hair. She's sporting a gown. Came up the trail. Now the three of us guys are like, oh, my Lord. We look at each other like, I, we finally got something here, you guys. Now remember the story was a man and a lady, and the lady's head was decapitated upon hitting the bottom of the bridge. Mm -hmm. And this is getting closer. And as I said, appeared to be a woman in a gown. Now we're starting to kind of get freaked out. It's it's hovering maybe a half a foot, a foot above the trail. And as it's appearing and getting closer, the head on the top of this, this apparition, it disappears. And it starts to move faster and faster toward us. Now we are scared. We turn around and we just start running down this trail. It seemed like we were running down this trail forever to finally get out to to, to lights, well, street lights. It was nighttime to, to the subdivision. Mm -hmm. And this thing is gaining, gaining, and gaining upon us. And we could hear kind of weird screams and yells that was thrust at us. I happened to stop one last time, and this thing had to be Jessica and Nick and everybody listening, 15, 20 feet. I fall down. I turn around. I stumble. I fall down. And you know the story. The last one in line usually gets it. Right. Well, obviously, I'm still here today, but I get up, start running. Now my buddy is looking in back of me. He falls down. I think he falls down, but I didn't care about him. I was motored straight down the street, <laughs> finally hit the subdivision, took one quick look, and this thing is still there. And then it kindly, it, then it just faded away into the nighttime. And I tell you this, I live about 11 blocks from Dead Man's Curve. And I just ran, ran, and ran until I got home that night. I got in. My mom and dad happened to be up. Uh, how come you're sweating? How come you're panicking, Rob? I'm like, I just saw something you're not going to believe. Just leave me alone. I go into my bedroom. I shut the door. I go to bed. Wake up the next morning, and I get with my two buddies, and we all convene at a fort <laughs> that we had made in some other location, not by Dead Man's Curve, by the way. And we all... And we, I, I, I brought some drawing paper, some pencils, and we all sat down privately between the each of us sat down, and we all draw drew, I should say, what we saw that night. And yet, lo and behold, every, we both, all three of us, drew the exact same picture, and we were just mesmerized. You know, we all saw the same thing. And hence the story of Dead Man's Curve. Now, I do believe it existed. And I think it's true to this day. Now, Dead's Man, Dead Man's Curve is is no longer there. Uh, in fact, they put another roadway through there. Unfortunately, all the tree lines are gone. The new bridge has been built. It's all cement. And it's unfortunate. I haven't heard anything since, or relatively speaking, I haven't researched it at all. But, but yeah, that was my uh, one of my ghost encounters uh, as a teenager going Very to high school. Very cool. Yeah. That's so. awesome, Rob. I like that yeah. story. Well, yeah. thank you. We'll have to talk about that some more when, when we have some more time yeah. in the well, future. Well, obviously, you know, we could, we could, yeah. We, we got, pick, we got we, Thursday. We, we could pick it apart. Yeah, we got a good <laughs> yeah. show. Here. We do have thank a good, you. we do have a show Thursday with Nick Santiago. Yes. And uh, Thursday with Brunch with Bigfoot Rob. He's going to talk some paranormal with us. Yeah. With me Wait, is Jessica. it Al Santariga? Is that Al Santariga. Al yeah. Okay, I kind of made a yeah. play on his name. Sorry, yes, Al. You did. Okay. I was, I, I, yes. Okay. I have a I have a southern accent, so. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, no, one. Jessica, you don't have a right. southern accent. I just a little really? bit. Just a little right. bit. All right. Well. I do. Hey, y'all. So thanks, Jess. That's the story. <laughs> I wanted I wanted to keep it short. Yes. Because I know well, these other because I know these other two guys are blowhards. Whoa, man. Well, let's oh, okay, let's let's go to, to Jason or Tex. Who wants to go next? Because we're running, we're kind of running short on time. Jason. Okay. Yes. I'll I'll go I'll go quick. Um, okay. Both aspects of this story have been told multiple times. One's in the book, but I'm going to do something I've never done very, very deliberately. I'm going to actually combine both aspects. I've kept them separate for a long time for a reason, but I figured tonight's one we can talk about. Okay. So 
again in my book, Metroplex Monsters. Dallas Demons, Fort Worth Coatman, other terrors of the Trinity River, available wherever fine books and trashy rags are sold. Um, there's a story to tell about the Goat Man in Johnson County, the Goat Man's Bridge, aka Old Soapy, because it literally just bubbles up. It's a weird name. Anyway, it's Johnson County, it's out in the middle of nowhere. Who cares? But of course, every Goat Man Bridge, every teenager needs to take their new car, park it there at midnight, honk three times, turn off the engine, flash the lights, you know. So the goat man appears, jumps up and messes up your car. And I don't know why you'd want to mess up your new car, but they're teenagers. That's what they do. So one night, these three teenagers show up and they do the thing. But instead of goat man showing up, a man behind pulls up behind them in a long black robe wearing a mask, terrifies them. And they freak out. So like, what is going on? So they turn the car back on and they start flooring it out of there. And they start noticing as they're moving forward. And I've driven this road. It's like, you can't go that fast. Other people in robes start lining up on the side of the road. Yeah. <laughs> and, it, and it freaks them out. Of course, I'm here. I'm, ah, this feels like urban legend, right? The thing I've never revealed is that I've talked I've talked about aspects of this on the show that in the Dallas Fort Worth mm-hmm. Metroplex I have discussed with people in in who would in the place to know yeah that there is a I've asked the question just directly is there an active satanic group that is actually going around using homes as you know and like they they are actually performing real sacrifices these people know what they're doing yeah. I know because I've seen the houses that they've used because of the industry I work in. They've all confirmed to me, yes, this is a real thing. They're like, we don't know if it's one, we don't know if it's more, but they're there and they've been around for a very long time. Uh, several homicides. Again, the detective that I know said he believes that he knew several of these homicides that he's worked connected to them, but he could never prove it. Here's the thing I've never told anybody until now. The houses that again in my industry i was working reo properties these are bank owned properties that are being resold okay oftentimes they're used you know by druggies they'll come in before the last visit uh before the property is actually sold they'll trash it up it has to get cleaned that happens all the time but i was seeing often enough uh satanic where, where animals or have been flayed out this is a proper yeah. sacrifice the thing i never said is the ones that I saw were in Johnson County, literally in the area around this bridge. Three different wow. times. Oh my gosh. Wow. So the reason so the story's it's in, intertwined. The story's absolutely intertwined. Yeah. And I've never said because the problem is it's like, well, this just the goat thing or you know, the goat man's bridge thing feels like so much of an urban legend. My problem is wow. it is directly connected to what I have seen personally in the real world. Oh where my there gosh. Is clearly someone running around again i've seen them all over the dallas fort worth metroplex Mm -hmm. because that's where i've worked but there was three that literally sort of circle that bridge oh my gosh and it could be like a a goat man or a pan or some sort of entity being conjured up by the rituals it's well we see that with the didn't uh again the Denton one, right? The the old uh-huh. Alton Bridge, the most the more famous one. Yeah. There, again, I have an entity being seen less than half a mile away from that bridge on the same road. Not oh a goat gosh. man, but something very, very strange, almost alien. But again, what yeah. these teenagers saw that night wasn't a goat man. These were apparently dark occultists, prepared, apparently either lured there by the hopes of some of a stupid pair of te- some stupid teenagers showing up to try and do this thing. You could call it a prank, urban yeah. legend. I leave that to you. But what I can say is, for a fact, there was, and maybe and there still is, mm-hmm. all over the DFW, an active occult uh, group of coven that yeah. does perform dark witchcraft, that does murder people and sacrifice them, yeah. and is probably, possibly conjuring creatures that people are seeing. Again, uh, crazy. White Rock, White yeah. Rock Lake. I, yeah, I, yeah, I managed to double the accounts. I managed to double yeah. the accounts, but I've got people seeing things at White Rock, like an actual goat man. Yeah. This is not, again, this is one in Cedar Hill. I don't even want to talk about that one. Yeah. Um, 
because that one actually freaks me out. So I'll, well, I'll, he, I'll yeah, and you, you know that will. that story that Jeremiah told us tonight was about it looked like a, a horse man or something. Yeah. So it, I don't know. There, there's some weird cryptids out there. Jason, thank you so much for that story. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to talk more about that in the future, too. Quick no question, problem. Jason. Did he yeah. have sex with him or not? Uh, they all they saw were the people and they freaked out and they tried to get out of there as fast as they could. Like I said, you you can't really do more than 30 miles an hour and, and be safe on that road. Yeah. So I don't know how fast they were they were going, but they said that as they were driving, people were literally coming out from the sides of the of the tree line because it's it's a very narrow road and the tree Ooh. line's right there. No one said they saw anything like knives or anything like that, but they saw the people and that's what freaked them out. Y'all are keeping it creepy tonight. I love this. I love this. Tex, tex what is? T tell us a story, Tex. We've got just, we've got about ten minutes left tonight. Let Let's hear something creepy. I think you're muted. You're muted. Hold on. Yeah, you're muted. Tex. Let's unmute you. There we go. There we go. There we go. We got gotcha. you. All right. I'm going to tell y'all something that I've never told anybody. Cool. Okay. Is, is, you know, and being in this and, and everything and for the last, what, five, six years, I've never mentioned this. It was after I had my dogman encounter. I lived out in the boonies. My parents were gone for some reason. I don't remember why. And I told y'all after I saw that, I went through um, a phase where I was actually scared of the dark. Uh, you know, I was scared of everything. And so they're gone big thunderstorm hits all right and i'm just looking i love thunderstorms and i'm looking out the window and everything and the lightning flashes and over by this electrical pole lit up by the light i see something leaning against this electrical pole every bit every bit of at least six and a half feet tall Okay, because I knew I knew that electrical. I knew our fence ran there. I knew that it was right outside our our in our our backyard. Um, maybe forty yards away. Every time the lightning flashed, I would see this thing. Sometimes it would light up enough where I would see it move. I get so scared that. I go load my gun and I call a friend of mine that I'd actually told my story to. And I said, this is what I got going on. I don't know what's going on here. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm scared. And, uh, I sat there and watched this thing for probably an hour. Every time the lightning would flash, it would be in a different position. It would either be leaning against the light pole. Sometimes it would be like this. Goodness. You know? Man. But it never moved from that spot. That's pretty terrifying. And <laughs> I didn't, I, I locked all the doors, <laughs> made sure all the windows were, were locked. Like I said, loaded my gun. Did not get an ounce of sleep. Because I didn't know what was out there. So I finally fell asleep, passed out basically in the living room, sitting in a chair with my gun on my lap. <laughs> and uh, at, I'm trying to, uh, maybe I'm seeing something, you know, maybe my eyes are playing tricks on me, something like that. So next morning comes around, I walk outside, there's nothing beside that light bulb. And at that point, I'm not smart enough to go try to looking for footprints, but they probably got washed away anyway. It was a it was a downpour, and I'm just I don't know what it was. I don't know if it was a squatch. I don't know if it was that dog man. I'm like, what in the? Why would it be a person? I'm out in the middle of nowhere. Why would this? Why would a random person? Be standing there in the middle of a lightning storm watching my house. Yeah, a little odd. So that that 
really freaking creepy. That's me creepy. Out. That's really creepy. Do you think that was a dog man text? That's the only thing I can come up with. Yeah, it, it was it moving was like almost it. human like though, and it's yeah. and it's the way it was standing. That's <laughs> creepy <laughs> as heck. Hmm? Yeah. Text, do you think he was there for you? I think he was watching me or watching our yeah. place. I don't know. Most definitely. Um, you know, we, we, there there was, you know, so much sign of him. I mean, he, I, I firmly believe he killed my dog, threw him underneath the house. Oh, man. You know, yeah. about a year before I saw him or so. So, you know, I ran into him that second time. It, it's, and we always had stories about, you know, wild dogs everywhere, a big cat tearing something up, mm -hmm. you know, but. I couldn't. I couldn't come up with anything else that it could have been. Yeah, I mean, it could. It could have been ET in nature, perhaps. But I mean, I, I wouldn't think it'd be that big. But who knows? Yeah, we, we, the we don't only know, thing, right? Because it was the same height as the railroad ties that we used for fence posts. Because there was a there was a fence post. Yeah. Uh, an H post that we'd put in not too far from where I saw this thing. Now, when I say this thing was next to the, the, the light, the, the pole, the electrical pole, it was close enough where it was leaning against it. And then it would not lean against it. Mm -hmm. You know, it was so hard to see because, you know, you only got to see it in the flashes of lightning because we didn't, yeah, you know, right. we had our booger light up next to the house, but it didn't reach that far, you know, wow. but that is terribly you know, creepy. Tex, I am thoroughly impressed with all three of y'all tonight with your stories. These are amazing. What a way to finalize this amazing night on Halloween, y'all. This was awesome. Yeah. Well, Nick, you know what? You guys, we've only got about a minute left tonight because I'm I'm going to cut it right at, at midnight. Yeah. Uh, this mm. on the on the east side. So I want to. Yeah, Nick, do you have any final words for tonight for for our Halloween show? Just, I just wanted to answer Crystal. She uh, asked a question about a half hour ago. Uh, Crystal, the Smithsonian is owned by the United States government. So if that mm -hmm. helps answer your question. Oh. And uh, we've sent uh, over the years, and I'm talking 10 years back, over the years we've sent samples there to the Smithsonian, and they have claimed to never have received them. So I would really say to everybody out there don't go that route if you have any sort of a sample from a sasquatch dog man or any other type of cryptid don't go the route of sending it to the smithsonian to confirm anything yeah agreed you'll never you'll never see it again it, it nope. never happened yeah, yeah. They, they absolutely denied it and we had the ups uh uh which called the, the tracker on it saying that it was delivered and so and so signed for it and they said oh, that person don't even work here we don't know who that is it's with all those giant skeletons <laughs> yeah yeah i yeah. mean it was like nine feet long and you didn't receive it okay <laughs> right yeah oh gosh mm -hmm. yeah that's what happened going up tonight it was great stories yeah these are amazing <laughs> this has been the best halloween ever y'all really? so yeah, thank you so much. And so we were worried about filling in the time. I had a story. You had a story. Wow. And we, and we're we're hitting it right on time too, right, right here at the there. end. So yeah, well, and and the the great finale with Texas Front Porch. I love it. So thank y'all so much for being here. Thank you for your support, y'all. And you thank you to everybody in the super uh, in the the chat tonight, and for the super chat from Spaced Out Radio. Dave Scott was in the house tonight. I want to give a big shout out to Dave Scott. And the spaced out radio crew, uh, y'all go, y'all go tune in. He's going live right now on the spaced out radio channel on YouTube. So y'all go do that. And everybody, please lock your doors tonight. Bring your yes. pets inside. Yeah. Okay. There's, there's goat men and horse people out there. <laughs> 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 we got to worry about. Yep. Okay. So, um, everybody take care. And, um, Nick, thank you for co-hosting with me tonight. This was awesome. Yeah, it was a fun pleasure. It was great. Yeah, well, we'll I'll be seeing all y'all soon. And um, and Nick, thank you once again. And thank you to Texas Front Porch. Thank you to Josh Turner and to Daryl Denton and to Jeremiah Fountain. And and DA was going to show up, but I know he had a show tonight, so he's probably still live for all he's we know. Late, yep. Yeah. 
All right, y'all. Well, everybody, have a wonderful Halloween. I hope everybody enjoyed the show tonight. And uh, and join me on Wednesday. I have a show. Uh, Wednesday, I'm going to have Dr. Dr. John Stamey. Uh, I think we're going to be talking about Lizard Man on my sh my daytime show. And then on Friday, okay. I'll be on Texas Front Porch with Texas Front Porch doing my remote viewing show. I'm not sure what my target is yet. Uh, I'll figure that out tomorrow. <laughs> and uh, and so and uh, everybody tune into Texas Front Porch. We've got Ciro Papers. We got Brunch with Bigfoot, Michigan Rob. We got Texas Front Porch. Jason McLean questions everything. And Nick, Nick is also a part of uh, the North American Dogman Project. You guys check him out too. And uh, everybody have a good night. Okay. I think I, I think I got it all in. Okay. You did. Great job, <laughs> Jessica. Great job. Thank you. Y'all have a great night and we will see y'all soon. See you next time. Thank, Thank you, Joe. Right. Thank you. Appreciate y'all. Bye, y'all. Bye.